To learn means to be in a state of play, to live a life of curiosity, a life of inspiring one another, a life of connecting with each other, and a life of real conversations. Welcome to Natural Learning. Alright, welcome to another day. So we're going to talk about computer and video games. Um, do you think that your kids are spending too much time on them? Um, are you wanting them to do other things but whatever you suggest seems to get turned down? Or do you see no point in video games and that your children are just wasting their time and not learning the things that are actually important? Or the things that you think are actually important. So let's talk about these games. Um, yeah, when children play video games, they find them important. And they're also generally content to play them by themselves if need be. Um, they usually don't put any pressure on adults to join them. And they are also mostly welcoming if adults do want to join them. And unfortunately, when that situation is reversed, uh, us adults are often not as accommodating. So when there's things that we find important, such as maybe reading or being able to do maths, uh, we don't take the approach that children do. We, we do usually put pressure on children to do the activities that we think are important. But this kind of one-sided bargaining isn't particularly helpful. So yeah, if you feel that you're fighting your kids to get them to do what you think is important, take some time and join them in what they think is important instead. So instead of brushing off their games as something frivolous um, that you don't want to do, uh, just take the time to be curious. You know, okay, my kids are enjoying these games, why? And you might not understand it at first, but take some time to be curious. Because if you are curious about them, they may also become more curious about you as well. Um, let them inspire you and allow yourself to be comfortable with the fact that when it comes to games, they will likely be the expert and you will likely be the beginner. Again, because if you are inspired by them, this has a added bonus of that they will also be more likely to be inspired by you and other things. It's about building up that relationship. So, and also be patient as you listen to their explanations. Uh, build up your ability to have meaningful conversations with your children by listening in a way that shows that you are wanting to learn and the information they are telling you is important for that. So if you take time to listen to what they think is what they think is important, they are more likely to listen to you also when you have something important to say. So yeah, these relationships, the more you make these relationships, you go both ways. Uh, the more it will actually start happening both ways. Again, simply enjoy connecting with them as you spend time in close proximity. Um, joining them and what they are doing makes them more comfortable to then later join you and what you would like to do. So the question though is why do children find video and computer games so important? And I, I find this a really interesting question and something that I've been interested in for a while. The educational researcher Peter Gray points out that to become educated is to learn who you are and what you love to do, to find your place in the world and to learn how to take charge of your own life and solve your own problems. Now most of us would probably agree that that's something that we want for our children. Um, and the thing is that in many ways video games allow children to really take charge of something and to solve their own problems. Video games are one of the few places where they can actually do this. They can solve problems at their own pace and they can even quit when they want to without uh, getting any pressure from anyone else. Because for most children, their daily lives are often a parade of adult-led, adult-directed or adult-organized activities. Um, in school, they are constantly being told where they should be, when they should be there, what they should do and how they should do it. And even in sports and music practices, uh, the, um, the pattern just continues. And then even um, at home, uh, this pattern of adult-led, adult-directed, adult-organized things uh, can continue as well. 
And the thing is that humans crave freedom and the chance to create our own destiny. We gravitate to those things that do give us freedom and allow us to feel in control. We want to see that our actions have an effect on the world and that we are not just passively being pushed around by others. So for many children, video games is their main chance to be control, in control of their world, even if it is just a virtual one or a simulation. So this time that we have during the coronavirus um, is now an opportunity for your home to become less adult directed uh, and everything. Again, become curious in your children and allow yourself to join them in their ideas as well. So one last point I'd like to make uh, and go into is this whole thing, notion of video games and addiction. So I want to first say, don't worry about video games and addiction. Uh, yes, there are splashy headlines and, and things like you might have heard, uh, you know, video games light up the same parts of your brain as cocaine does. Well, yeah, <laughs> when you are experiencing pleasure, your brain releases dopamine, but your brain does this whether it is cocaine, video games, or a piece of pizza. Uh, the fact is that video gaming raises dopamine levels in the brain to about the same degree that eating a slice of pepperoni pizza or a dish of ice cream does, except without the calories. That is, it raises dopamine to roughly double its normal resting level, whereas drugs like heroin cocaine or amphetamine raise dopamine by roughly 10 times that much. So yeah, we get dopamine when we have pleasure in things and yes, video games are pleasurable. So that's not unexpected. Um, I won't go into how addiction uh, works fully here, but just to say that addictions are generally symptoms of already uh, existing underlying problems. And if you want to, and, and if you want some good lockdown reading, check out Dr. Gabo Mate's book, In the Realm of Hungry Ghosts, uh, for an excellent look at addiction, if you are interested in that. It's hard to really classify as to what would count as a gaming addiction, but studies such as a large-scale well-designed study uh, conducted in Norway concluded that 1.4% of video gamers are addicted. So that's pretty low. Chances are your child is not addicted. Um, again, look at maybe some of the other things, explanations that I gave before of why video gaming can be so important to children. In fact, there are actually lots of positive uh, benefits to gaming and I'll leave you with the study to mull over uh, there was a large scale study, study conducted by Columbia University's Mailman School of Mental Health um, in terms of video gaming and children ages 6 to 11. So in that survey, 3,195 children and their parents estimate the average number of hours per week um, that the children play video games and the parents and teachers filled out questionnaires regarding each child's intellectual, social and emotional uh, functioning. And the primary finding was that those who played video games for five hours a week or more evidence significantly higher intellectual functioning, higher academic achievement, better peer relationships, and fewer mental health difficulties than those who played uh, such games less or not at all. So take from that what you will, but I just thought I'd throw something controversial in there as well, an extra bit of controversial thing. Um, so yeah, so to finish up, really, enough of me, go play some games with your kids, and although before you go, do give this video a like, and maybe even a share, that would be fantastic, and maybe later after you've finished playing some games, um, you can check out my website, frankeducation.nz, and maybe even sign yourself up for a one-on-one -on -one chat with me about natural learning. Alright, thanks so much, alright, bye.